Membres de la communauté diplomatique et autres distingués invités, chers collègues, chers étudiants, chers étudiants, mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue à cet événement très spécial. It is a privilege and an immense honor to introduce today Mr. Tawakul Karman. Mrs. Karman was awarded the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize, in 2011 in recognition of her nonviolent struggle for peace and women's rights. Faites Madame Kerman est la première femme arabe et la plus jeune lauréate du prix Nobel de la paix à ce jour. In awarding her, yeah. In awarding her the prize, the Nobel Committee said of her, and I quote, In the most trying circumstances, both before and during the Arab Spring, Tawakol Kalman has played a leading part in the struggles for women's rights and for democracy and peace in Yemen. End of quote. And in fact, many people in Yemen now call her the mother of the revolution. I'm sure everyone here has read widely about her, her outstanding accomplishment and credible journey. We are all anxious to hear her speak. So without further delay, Mrs. Kalman, on behalf of the Center for International Policy Studies, the Graduate School of Public International Affairs, the Faculty of Social Sciences, I would like to welcome you to Ottawa and especially to the University of Ottawa. We very much look forward to your time. Hello, everybody. You don't need now to put this. <laughs> I will speak one minute English. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. I am so pleased to be here in Ottawa. Yes, to meet, uh, to kind people here, Canadian people who were really with the dream of youth, of women of the people who struggle and sacrifice for their freedom and dignity and democracy. I want to, see, to say thank you to all Canadian people that really support Arab Revolution, Arab Spring, and that really support people who are suffering in the development countries and under development countries. Canada and Canadian people, they have a good reputation in our countries, so thank you so much. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you once again. Today's talk is about women and her struggle and the role that she has worked on in the Middle East and in the, in the Arab world specifically. Most likely we will be attending to this matter, but before that I would like to provide greetings to all the women who are struggling throughout the world, politically and public life as well. And politics actually provides more uh, strength for the women as they become leaders in this. As of this podium, I, I also greet the women of Syria who sacrificed their lives for freedom and to bring down the regime of the tyrant and loser. Our, our regards to the women in Syria who have actually sacrificed their lives for freedom to bring down the failure regime of 
Al-Asad. Our regards to all women in uh, Bahrain. Also regards to women in Africa, Asia, Latin America, who have actually paid the price for discrimination, illiteracy, and political conflicts. Greetings to all the women all over the world who present proof that change is actually possible. Our regards to the women who are now being dignified all over the world that provides greetings to the women who are also sitting in various levels of responsibilities worldwide regards to all those women who are leading in different facets and different um, departments including science and other uh, we are now talking a lot governments organizations the whole world is talking about the political partnership of women in the in public affairs whether it's political social financial economical and when when we talk about women for the justifications of what they do so that she can have victory as a human and at the same time provide victory for all those who are also in the same field. The, the participation of women is a very decent and dignified role that women have. Today we can say that women have become stronger than ever and it's now clear that the woman is has the ability to adjust to many facets and many changes that is fast in this world and in developing worlds and less developing especially in the Arab world these countries that witnessed and witnessed before the spring the Arab Spring and they have witnessed all kinds of cruelty atrocity today in this political uh, uh, facet especially she has become a leader with responsibility that becomes on her shoulder and at the same time responsibility to the family that she raises and the political and social responsibility that she has from this podium I pray to all women worldwide east and west north and, east and south I ask them to provide responsibility uh, and leadership in political and voluntary work they have to they have to struggle and at the same time perform all the work that has to be done by them it is it is their responsibility to make sure that they gain the freedom and confidence of others and they can do that that's the reality which provides day after day that the woman has the ability and has been able to provide to provide competition with others. I also call upon every father, husband, brother to give his sister, his daughter, and his wife to give full trust when she begins engaging in the political life. 
of when she engages in the public work in, in, to give service to her society. He will then find that the society of men, especially in our Arabic societies, he will find thousands of reasons to be proud of what women are achieving to make this life a better life. I call upon female leaders in the civilized world to reach out and, and help with all their female friends in the East and the South when they engage in their struggle to reach equality and equal opportunities. I call the women of the Arab Spring and those who participated in the beginnings of the revolutions to keep moving ahead to lead the political scene, working and defending the rights and be leaders of the country just like they were leaders in the revolution. I hereby call, call upon them to form their own political parties and social begin new organizations, not only to compete, but to also bring great You have now started to make a good, a better future. There is no way to go back forwards in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Syria to achieve a better life. We still do struggle because of the society of men and because of the culture of exclusion and discrimination against women. But this will not keep you back and will also let you participate in your struggle to participate in the future of this country. Now this transitional period, it's true that it's much better than it was before the Arab Spring, but it's, this participation does not suit, it's not enough when we think of your great struggle and your great sacrifices in the Arab Spring, but I am sure you will be able to move ahead and not go backwards once again. I am sure that the future of women, the future, the good future, the better tomorrow, the just will not be achieved without the women. We, the women, will build the better tomorrow. Women bring dignity and create freedom. What we have achieved with the freedom achieved is thanks to the participation and efforts of both men and women together. Women must get full rights due to this participation. There is no dignity, no freedom in a nation where women are not free and not given their full rights. I am proud of thousands, hundreds of thousands of women, of the women of Syria. Some of them were martyrs, some were injured, some were excluded in prisons, in the prisons of the Tehran Bashar al-Assad. The free woman is the woman who frees her countries and achieves the great revolutions. And it does not disallow me from saying that women are not only that stand behind the greatness of men, but also behind all revolutions. 
worldwide, and in all freedom activities and all social activities, the women have provided freedom and bravery in various fields for the for the sake of freedom. Dear friends, now women are also equal to men all the time. There will be no monopoly as far as males are concerned in every field, political, economical, and others. In this case, I am also asking women to listen to their bravery in and challenges in life. Challenges of political as well as economic with bravery that is no less than that of their partners, the males. Dear friends, we have witnessed that women, that, that the woman is actually a fortified fort for the family in history as well as now. Woman is a woman is actually the queen of her family as well as the fortified value to the family in, in various fields and various challenges. When life comes back to its normalcy, women will be there and they will be in the leadership seat. Challenges are always there in front of the eyes of the women. That's why women have to work hard to make sure that they can prove their ability and present their existence. In when, we, when we challenge our male friends or our partners, if they have actually provided that partnership is always there between males and females. And thank you very much. Tabakul, thank you very much. My name is David Petrasic. I'm the director of the Center for International Policy Studies, and it's Sorry. I think you got that, though. Um, it's my job to uh, encourage you to um, put some questions now to, to Ms. Carmen. And we have it about half an hour or 40 minutes. There's a microphone over here. Um, I'd encourage you, please, just to introduce yourself and, and uh, keep it brief. I'm sure a number of you will want to put questions. But uh, I invite any of you who wish to come up to the microphone to, to do so. Please. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you, first of all, for coming to speak with us. It was a great talk. Um, I was wondering if you could share some perspectives on how to go about changing um, the values and how um, people view women in these really patriarchal societies. So again, I get these. I okay. Want, I want to sure. This. Yes. But I'm slowly. Please. Okay. I am wondering if you can share your perspectives on how to change the values um, and the attitudes towards women in these patriarchal societies. Okay. No, no, no. Just, huh? just talk. Just Uh, okay. I think most of my speech includes this, you know, answer of, to your question. It's something belong first to women, and then belong to her, you know, family, then the society. Woman has to sit to decide to break all the bad traditional and customs ar around her. 
and she must be in the deep of practicing her rights. Don't ask any rights or freedom for any, from anyone. She must know that her responsibility is to be in the public life, is to change the bad, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the bad situation around her. If she decides to be that, and if she enter to the to, 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 to political life, she be, she, she be in, in, the, in the process, then people will, maybe they will surprise, but then people will, will follow, follow her. And what is, that, that's exactly what happened in the Arab Spring. And before the Arab Spring, I came from, from yani, society, they call it, it's conservative society. You know, this, this conservative society that has bad customs and, and traditional, and also has, unfortunately, some yani, wrong fatwas that came from people who are belong, they say that there are sheikhs, they came, they, they are belong to, to previous uh, regime who, you know, who doesn't care about, about religion, you know, about the, the reality of religion, how to respect women. So we were in the, in the street, we were alone, and people, they were sur sur surprised. How was women? They are alone in the street and, and yani, taking the, yani, microphones. And first, there was something surprising. Then people, they accept us. They accept to follow us. And then people, they accept to, to be under the leadership of, of women. So it's, it's very, yani, the initiative, I usually said that, the initiative must be from the from the from the woman at first, and the, from the trust of her family, and then the society will accept her. This is number one. And also, there is another responsibility that came from the government, from the authorities, especially the authorities after after the Arab Spring, after the revolutions, not just in Arab Spring, in any country that you know women be marginalized, you know, which is that there is. It must be the constitution and the laws must, must, must guarantee the equality between, between both of them. The, the, the equal citizenship, which, is, which doesn't speak about just women and men, it's the, it's the value about equal citizenship. So if the constitutions and laws guarantee that, I think women will, will, will play uh, yani, uh, a good role uh, on the public uh, life. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Did I, uh, did I answer your question? Okay, thank you. Okay, my name is Sabria Namrov, and I'm a second year graduate student at the School of International and Public Affairs. Slowly. Okay. I just have a question. Can I ask it to you in Arabic, and will there be translation for other people if I ask it in Arabic? Uh, now, now that we've switched into English, if because yeah. she has to translate it right here, so it'll oh, be a okay, little perfect. more, uh, I think. So uh, my question is maybe perhaps also a comment more than it is a question. We were talking about the Arab Spring and we were talking about the role of women within the Arab Spring. And we mentioned countries, most of the countries that we've seen um, uh, the role of women uh, come across in, in, a, in a way that inspired people here in the, in, in the West at least. But I think that we've also forgot perhaps to mention um, a Palestinian women and what they've been doing in the Palestinian struggle. So if you look at uh, peaceful resistance in Nilain, Bilain, cities where women have taken a, a strong um, role to, uh, to fight occupation and colonization. And I was wondering if you can comment on that and if you do see a link uh, with that and also perhaps also comment on the fact that why here it's difficult sometimes for people to see the link between the greater broader Arab Spring and, and um, the niche... The, the, the link with the Palestinian cause. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did you ask about Egyptian woman? No, Palestinian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to ask me a question in Arabic, um, when we talk about Arab Spring, 
there is five countries and now there is Bahrain in, in if it's you know if uh, if 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 Bahrain you know the, the revolution will will spread uh, yani good but uh, Arab Spring means you know these five countries with Palestinian you know woman has a, a good great role in in, in fighting uh, the the equation. I hope that all Palestinians, and I hope really to solve the Palestinian issue because without without solving Palestinian issue, the world will be unstable. We need peace to be everywhere, and we will not have peace without solving the the the, the, the Palestinian issue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ferry Kerkov. I used to be the Canadian ambassador in Egypt, and I've lived the joys of the revolution, and I congratulate you for your action. Shukran Gezira. Let me just ask, we've embraced the revolution, and we think it's a wonderful event, but at the same time, in Egypt, there's been a major change, and today you have more or less the Muslim Brotherhood and also the Salafists having a greater say in everyday's life. And we are all concerned about the fate of women in Egypt because their situation today is worse than it was before. So how do you see the eventual development of the situation where the women would have really equal rights in Egypt? Shukran Gizira. First of all, I don't believe that the situation of women in Arab Spring countries, all the Arab Spring countries, that it's worse than before. I think it's bitter because women in the revolution, she she is in the Arab in the in the revolution, she is leader. And what was with some countries before the revolution, she was even if she is in the political life, she was decor. And now. When uh, we are str- struggling to be women, to be after the revolution, to be leader, to be in the process as something, yeah, uh, uh, to, to, to don't be decor. So there is no comparing between women before the revolution and women now. We are, we, we sh- because if we said be woman before the revolution and woman now, we will say woman, even in Egypt, she has a good situation before that because she lead the revolution who stepped down the, uh, Mubarak. But the comparing, the, compa- the, co- the comparison is between woman in the revolution and woman after the revolution. This is the comparing. Is the percentage, is, is the participation of women now is equal and is suitable to her participation in the revolution? I, I can assure you, no. We, no. We want her, not just for women, by the way. I, I'm talking today about women just because, because they asked me to, 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 stay, to, to speak about women. But really, even the youth, youth with, which, which means women and men, there is no... Yani, their part, the, the, the participation of youth after the, after the revolution is very less. So we are struggling and we, are, we, we say that the, 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 the participation of women and youth in the coming government in all Arab Spring uh, countries must be equal to their participation in, uh, in, that, uh, uh, in, in the participation in the, in the revolution. To achieve that, we need two things. One, we need that women and youth to make their alliance, to make their uh, to, to their to make their alliance, to to build their organizations, to build their parties, political parties, to be in the political process. Without that, they will be marginalized. Without that, but that, that the organizing. Powers, they will talk the the power. That is some, that is something, يعني بديهي. Obvious. That is something obvious. Any organized 
movements, any organized parties, they will take the, the power. So women must organize herself, youth must organize themselves to be, in the political, to be inside the political uh, uh, process. This is number one. Number two, as I said before, we need that the constitutions, the new constitutions, the new laws after the after the revolution after must be guaranteed the equal citizenship. Equal citizenship means women and men. Means all the all the all the all the مكونات المجتمع all the مكونات المجتمع مجتمع components components. Yeah, uh, uh, all the all the society components. If we guarantee social social components, if we guarantee equal citizenship, we will give the uh, the equal opportunities to women to uh, to, to nafis, to compete. And I am sure, as I said, she will win. We have to give her the the, the, the space. Yeah. Thank shukran, you. Shukran. Please, <coughs> Constanza. You have mentioned on several occasions how it's important that women should uh, make the decision to be in the public life and also the importance of institutions to support uh, equality of citizenship and uh, produce new laws. Since we are in a university, I was wondering if you can comment on the role of education and the role of education in the countries that have gone through the Arab Spring and had the revolution, and how you see education contributing to this process, <clears throat> and how can education also be reformed to support the change that you're mentioning. Thank you so much for saying that. It's a very important point, education. And I will speak in Arabic now. <laughs> no, no, he has, he, the translator is here. Okay, you can put your. Hello, Helen. Well, I'm sorry, I had a Zoom. Huh? Okay. Now, if you're not here, well, the main idea is education. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Education and health is extremely important now to give better role of the society in this transitional process that we live in, especially in the countries that are now going through a transitional period, especially the Arab Spring country. I speak about developing countries or any country where there is political transition that would lead to the change in the government, this would also need a social transition, an economic transition, enforce, and it's important to enforce health. When I speak about my worries about the participation of women in the political process, it is important that the women get better leading roles. But I am not worried about the women, especially in the Arab Spring countries. I am not worried about them in taking a role. She now has the opportunity to, to take leading roles. This would be only for the educated women, where there are not many educated uh, women, especially in Yemen. The educated women will take the leading roles. Those who have get receive the best education will be able to become leaders. But what about the uh, millions of women who went out on the streets, those who played a real role in stepping down, toppling the governments, and they found out all about, yes, they were killed on the streets while they were trying to achieve peace and change what will happen to them, what is their destiny. Millions of them suffer. From low education or illiteracy. They suffer from lack of resources, lack of hospitals that take care of their health. 
Therefore, we are in true need of education to, to enforce the role of women in the future. Without education, without health, those women who worked on the change might not go back to their traditional roles. We have to support them. They have done what they could. They went out on the streets. They toppled the dictator, also toppled the old the wrong traditions. Wrong. They, they revolted against the politics, even the traditions. This is not the real religion. Now, the role of the new society. What is the role of women? Not just women. The new free society. What is their role in this transitional process? This political change in this part of the region. They need to support this transition economically where education and health are the main pillars. Okay, please. Hi, uh, my name is Mathieu Roy. I work for Foreign Affairs. Uh, I would like to know more specifically about uh, the transition in Yemen. So could you talk, share your views on the situation of women in the national dialogue and the, the situation for women in uh, Al-Islah and uh, Islah's pla platform, please? Please don't ask about women in, in parties, not just in Islah party, in parties in Yemen. Because yeah. most of them in Yemen, most of the parties, they don't give uh, Yemeni women their rights. Most of them, all of them, not most, all of them. But that, is, that was before Arab Spring, before the revolution. Now after, when the uh, parties make their conferences, we will see what is what is new, what, what the revolution changed in their, you know, in the, in the, in the mind and in the institutions of their, of, the, of these parties. This is number one. Number two, about the situation, uh, what is the transitional, uh, uh, what is the transitional situation in Yemen now? Um, the national dialogue, it's, you know. Now, in Yemen, we are in the transitional period. We have a new president, and this new, new president, we give him our trust. We give him the legitimacy of the revolution. We accept him to lead the transitional period in Yemen for two years. Uh, he's doing well, but he's slowly in some, in some things, especially in unified the, the, the army and security forces. Uh, we encourage him to do that uh, very fast, and we, we now... We expected that he will unify the army and uh, security forces for very soon. If he will delay that, that will attack really the transitional period. This is number one. Number two, we are now in the, in the process of the national dialogue. And we have committee, I am a member of this committee, which is preparatory committee for the national dialogue. This, the, this committee is... Uh, preparing for the national dialogue that will gather all Yemeni's powers in one table to write new constitution and to write new constitution on the condition of the revolution because we make values that, we, that the new constitution must be uh, for, uh, yeah, consistent which is equal citizenship, which is uh, human rights, freedom, democracy, uh, uh, rule of law, accountability, all this uh, um, dividing between, dividing between powers, uh, the, the, the balance between powers. We have you know, many, many you know, criteria for the new constitution. And we, we are still in the tent and our squares are still so and, and we will not take our tent until we guarantee this new constitution will fulfill and uh, all 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 the values of the uh, revolution uh, now we are at the and final pro, uh, stage 
stage of the of the of the uh, of our work in preparatory committee. So now we are preparing the report. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the report to, the, to to give it to the president. So I expect maximum maximum one one month. Then we will start the uh, the conference of of national dialogue. But we have something very important that we put. 20 points we gave it to the president Hadi and you are because you are from foreign affairs minister and minister I'm talking to you to these details because these 20 points which is yani, include very important points that will to hear to hear to prepare set the stage set the stage, set, okay. set the stage for good dialogue Without, without fulfilling all these 20 uh, points, the national dialogue will be threatened. It's very important uh, po uh, points, which inc include one, unified the army and security forces, two, publishing the law of the tra uh, transitional law, uh, no, transitional justice law, transitional justice law, Three, many things about, many points about uh, uh, people in South, so to, how to solve uh, the, the human rights issue in the, uh, in the South, and some points about Sada. So, and also about the uh, injured, um, the prisoners and disappeared people. So this is 20 points. It's with, with President Hadi before two months. And we are until now waiting his, you know, his, uh, his taharruko or يعني uh, قيامه and he's acting good with this 20 points without fulfilling the, that 20 point something. يعني the 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 national dialogue will be will be threatened. We need national dialogue to be yeah, to organize in a في بيئة صحيحة يعني in a good environment. Okay. Will just, I was just going to say. Maybe I think everyone, I, I answered to. Maybe everyone but doesn't know. Some but of them they don't understand. Uh, yeah. Tabakal referred to the tents, and of course in Yemen the the revolution, uh, the, the people camped in the streets in tents, in the, in their tens of thousands, if I've understood correctly. And I think what you were saying is that many of them are still there. Yes, we are tents, still uh, there. Yeah, still and I came from my tent, by the, the way. If yeah. the <laughs> promise of the revolution will 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 be achieved. And we will take. We will not take off the. Tent until we guarantee the new constitution will guarantee all the values that revolution put. Okay. Next, please. Thank you. Please. Hi, uh, my name is Kafia, and I'm a student at the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs. I wanted to ask you a question, uh, how the rise of women in the Arab Spring, specifically in Yemen, will lead to progress in other areas, especially child marriage, uh, when the victims are young girls who grow up in the situation as disadvantaged young women. So how is it going to help that issue? As I said before, that the, situa um, the situation of women now is something different about the situation of women before the revolution. It's totally different because many things, the most important thing, women lead the revolution. Do you know what that means? It's, it's the most difficult field of political process. When we say that we want women to be president, even to be president, it is, a, it is something, it is nothing than woman when she leads the revolution. It's revolution. So when she leads the revolution, is, does she just you know, go to the street, just speak? No, she lead it. And people were, was behind her. So she gained the trust on herself. And the society also trust her. When the society, yeah, million people go after women and they say, they, they, they chant with her and you know, when women paid her, her life, sacrificed her life, and when the previous regimes killed the women in purpose, they killed Tufaha and, 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 and Yasmin and Zainab in Yemen because their leadership, 
they didn't get, they, they, they kill them, these three women, just, you know, for, from false bullets. They kill them because they were leading the, the, the revolution. So don't see to the, you know, the, 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 the leadership of women in the, in the, in the revolution that something is, uh, is simple. So this is very important point of change. This is very important point of change. That now the question is, will women and youth will keep in their achievement in the revolution or not? I, really, I can't judge and I can't trial the, uh, uh, the current election in all the Arab Spring. Even with the, the Arab Spring that has a good, you know, a good uh, um, yani results for women, for, for women. For example, in, in, in Libya, women in, in parliament, they are uh, yani almost uh, 30 percentage. In Tunisia, they are more. In, in Yemen, we are in, in the preparatory committee, we are four women in the preparatory committee. Not four women, we are six or seven women. So we are in the, in the government, we are four women, and that is the first time that women take the seats in the, in the, in the current, you know, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the recently, uh, history. Because we are in the, our, uh, history, we have two queens who lead Yemen. And women, Yemen was a great country in their, you know, under their uh, and really well, Yemen was in, in the under the uh, ruling of uh, Queen uh, Sheba Bilqis and Queen Arwa that it was the the greatest country in in the region and they call, they were calling it uh, Hab Yemen uh, my, our name the, the history of Yemen is Al Yemen Al Said it's the history it's uh, Happy Yemen and Happy Yemen was uh, Yemen. Yemen Felix, Yemen Felix, and that was under the the yani the, the ruling of Queen uh, Bilqis and uh, and Arwa. So currently we have four women in the government. We have more than six women in the preparatory committee uh, uh, for a national dialogue. And this committee, it isn't it isn't women there. It isn't decor like what what was before. They are preparing for writing new constitution. And they are preparing people to, to solve all the problems in Yemen, special South uh, issue, uh, so Southern issue and uh, Saada issue. And there is another issue, which is Tihama and Taiz, and there is another issues. But these two which is Southern and Saudi, which is more complicated situ yani, uh, issues that, uh, challenges that uh, Ali Saleh put in face, you know, uh, yani, in front of Yemeni's truth, yani, his ruling uh, Yemen. So uh, I am so confident that women yani, will get uh, their right, but again, women, how could women lead the street in the Arab Spring, all the streets in all the countries, how? when she carry the issues and the interests of people, not just her interests. When she said, I am the solution and I can solve the whole problems and of people in, in my country, not just all problems of women. When she knows that the, the to reach to her right, it's after to reach to the rights of all civilians. So she decided to protect her country all, and he, she decided to protect the rights of men and women. Regarding your question about early marriage, when we talk about early marriage, this is a good, uh, this is a very uh, complicated. Uh, issue in in most of the development and underdevelopment countries. It isn't in Yemen. There is a, a lot of countries in uh, in Africa. There is a lot of countries in uh, in Arab uh, uh, in Arab countries that also suffer from early marriage. But in Yemen, I am very sure 
that the coming uh, um, law will guarantee not constitution, because constitution will talk about equal citizenship, will talk about freedom, will talk about everything, but the, the, the law is special, the law of children. قانون الطفل صح؟ children. Special the law of child. Uh, the, the, the child law will guarantee that because the the, the issues and the problems that that ch child, children is suffer in Yemen is a lot. One of them is early marriage. So the early marriage will be solved through child uh, law, which is will determine the الحد الأدنى للطفولة. The lowest age. Of, of of childhood the minimum uh, the minimum age of childhood that will guarantee everything for for, for child the education the health the, uh, the the family and regarding of you know uh, forbidden the uh, early marriage okay next please we have quite a few people still so <clears throat> please keep your questions Hello and salam my name is manahashi and i'm a second year econ student uh, i just my question uh, is regarding the uh, the new newly formed governments, which are pro-Islamic or more Islamic than the previous ones. And my biggest concern as a woman is uh, what you're doing is not just a basic right, but an Islamic right as well. And a lot of these men who are in these very high, powerful positions uh, would say that what you're doing is possibly a something that is of a Western age, like you're pretty much a Western agent, and what you're doing is not Islamic. So uh, how would you say we overcome these challenges, and how would you face these men who happen to be in very powerful positions and uh, may hinder our process or the process of women in the Arab Spring or the Islamic world? Okay. How can so, I say so, it in English? Yeah. yeah, I understand. And I like your question. <laughs> um, I will speak in Arabic, if you don't mind. I'm waiting you. <laughs> okay. At the beginning, I am not afraid of any party or any revolution, as long as this revolution will work or this new government will work based on elections, I am not afraid of the choice of the people, whether they prefer the right or left parties as long as this is what the people want and this is what democracy brought. We fought for democracy, so we accept the choices. That is from one side. On another side, I am also not afraid and suppose that every person who supports freedom civil rights and political rights must not be afraid of the rise of any parties, especially the Islamic, especially if it was a moderate Islamic party. The rise of those moderate parties can limit can limit the extremists. Also, I am. I encourage the extremist parties, if they were right or left, because extremism is not a religion. And ex any extremists, I encourage the extremists to go in, in elections, because when they are in the political process. They will leave their ideologic ideologies, their extremist ideologies, because they are living in the reality. If they are outside the political process, their extremists might turn into violence and terrorism. 
any exclusion of any party will lead to violence, will lead to exclusion, and therefore this exclusion will lead to terrorism. It is good to give them opportunities to work in the political process. Fourth thing is these movements now, right or left or moderate now, people have the authority on the choice of the people of these parties is not based on ideologies. People choose this party or the other based on their programs, not based on their ideology. What is your program now? This is what we need to know, and then we make the choice. This is what the Arabic Arab Spring brought. People now evaluate and assess the parties based on their programs, and therefore now, the, and now those governments or those parties are challenged, challenged by how to find, how to do their work based on programs, not based on ideologies. If they do not do so, they would fail. Fifth point and final point is we have to respect the people's choice. They have chosen and therefore we have to respect what they need. The parties that rise up to the authorities must know that this, the people who brought them up to the authority is the same people or is this, are the same people that will bring them down, will make them step down if they do wrong. People no longer just clap for, for the governments. Governments are held accountable. People now can refuse and go and in revolutions, whether the government was from the east or west or moderate, the governments must commit to the people and to the revolution. They must commit to the values of the revolution. And then I fully trust, I have full trust in the youth and in the people and in women. I am sure. I'm sure that we are still, all of us are still in the role of revolution. Revolutions are not over yet in any Arab Spring country. Yes, we toppled the government, the head of the government only. Now we work on the corrupt institutions. We need to topple the corrupt institutions. This will not take long, but it will not be short either. It will not be done today or tomorrow. We cannot ask people who toppled governments yesterday. We cannot ask them for everything to be done today. We need to give them the opportunity. This will not be too long, just like in the European countries or in Canada or America, where they needed longer times. Now we have learned from you. We have learned from the West in this field in particular. Time for just a couple more questions. Uh, I'm from Canadian uh, Center for uh, Overseas Development. My name is uh, Dr. Samir Sakar. And uh, yeah. I really admire to see you here. I saw you in Yemen. We were busy during the change. And I really feel happy that you are with us in Atawayu. 
Now, my question, I, I admire, uh, before my question, really, uh, Ms. Tokol Kerman was, she was in the change square, not by herself, even her children were there. And for that, she has a great admiration. Uh, now, my question, all the countries which, which they were, the Arab Spring, except Yemen, Yemen ended in not totally and complete uh, victory. Uh, even, even worse than that, Yemen lost some independency. The people and the youth of Yemen from the revolution they didn't expect that end. Today we are administrate that the real administrator is the Gulf Council. Now, should we expect a new revolution in 2013 with the leadership of women and youth? Okay, thank you for your question. <laughs> I really support. I really support the transitional process now. And I think the transitional process, the transitional period, is the result of the revolution. So uh, even with the GCC initiative, with the GCC uh, mechanism, because the GCC initiative itself, they talk about immunity for, uh, for Ali Saleh, but GCC mechanism, they didn't talk about it. They just, you know, make some small, you know, and they didn't talk about it clearly. So with GCC initiative, uh, and even GCC initiative, uh, and uh, mechanism yani special, it is a result of the revolution of, of youth, the youth peaceful revolution. Without their revolution, the parties, they couldn't imagine to have just one point of that, you know, of that, you know uh, mechanism. So we are proud of what we, yani, to the step that we reach, but we was hoping that if we make our revolution like what happened in Tunisia and, uh, and Egypt, to make it yani, completely revolution. But really with the situation in Yemen and also with, you know, unfortunately, the power, the, the, the less supporting of the international community to complete revolution in Yemen, so it makes challenges of Yemenis. But now what what we are in the process yani we we are so proud of that and president had didn't come without the acceptance of the youth revolution and he, he his leg legitimacy is came from the revolution and also the new constitution also now uh, with the national dialogue what we are working and what we are the, the most important thing that we need now is unified army and security uh, uh, forces. Without that, maybe we will do something else. It's very important point. Without that, that will make very that will threat all the values and all the goals of revolution. So maybe we will, we will think about about that we about what. We, but it's very important, and we think that President Hadi maybe he will do something. But really, always we told him that he has to be, don't be slow, yani slowly like that, yeah, because the transitional period will end on, yani, to, in, the, in the February of 2014, and we want to move on. Okay. I think. We, we really have time, just. Yeah, my question is very quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Salaamu alaikum, Madam Tawakul Karman. Uh, that we can be able to see you and now we are happy to see you in Ottawa. Congratulations to you, to the family and to Yemen and to the Arab women and Islamic women and all women in general. Do you think, Ms. Karaman, that Canada through its civil society is playing a sufficient role in enhancing the social development life in Yemen, democracy, um, freedom of speech, and women's rights. What is your expectation from Canada? Very good question. What, what can we do? I think um, that Canada must uh, 
support all the transitional period uh, in all Arab uh, Spring countries, and not just in political, it's also in economic and also in social field. It's very, very important to do that. Um, uh, also, I really want Canada to... Uh, انها لا بد عليها انها تصادق على اتفاقيه كيوتو لحمايه المناخ اوكي يا استاذ نعم وراءك سوري اوكي اهم شيء انه بالنسبه لكندا يعني يعني نحن نحترم كندا وحقيقه كان لها دور كبير في نحن نسمعها من منذ صغرنا في مشاريع مهمه كثير داعمه يعني We've always heard about the great projects that Canada has done in the world. We hope that Canada supports the Arab Spring countries in a clearly and support the transitions, also the democratic transitions. We want the economic support to these Arab Spring countries. The political transition needs economic support as well. Any weakness in the economy would lead to, will need the political process, will need the support of the economic process. We need a lot from Canada in this field. We have not heard Canada's voice strongly during the Arab Spring. We need to hear Canada's voice stronger in future events. We thank Canada for all its support in all fields. I would also like to mention an important thing. We need sustainable development, not just the Arab, in the Arab Spring countries. We need it in all countries in the world, especially in the developing countries and less developed countries, this sustainable development cannot be created, cannot be established in a threatened land, threatened with crises, environmental crises, hurricanes, The main source of those crises that threaten the, fu the present, the future of Earth, and threatens the sustainable development, cannot even economically, is is the gases, toxic gases, not using alternative energy. I ask Canada to sign on the Kyoto Agreement to protect the climate. We would, I would like to see Canada put full support to renovate, to renew the agreement. It will end in September. I would really want Canada to renew the agreement and to use alternative energy, green energy. This will protect Earth. It will also protect ecological system and biological system. It will also lead to the sustainable development in all its sectors. These developing countries will work on having less poverty in the world and will support women and youth and will support more job opportunities and therefore this is the strategic plan. This is for the whole world. What happened in America with Sandy Hurricane, Katrina and Sandy Hurricanes are all because of those ga toxic gases. And therefore these crises do not just threaten the developing or underdeveloped countries, although it threatens the whole world. I ask Canada to sign the agreement, the Kyoto Agreement for a peaceful, safe world where everyone can live in peace 
for, and also for the developing countries and underdeveloped, I would like them to put real efforts to achieve sustainable development. Thank you. I'm I'm really sorry. We're going we're, we're already oh, the last one. Please. Uh, okay. If, if the question is if the question is short and, and the answer is, uh, I'm only conscious that there's several other things in your program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Quickly. Thank you very much. I'll be very brief. Uh, you've talked about equal citizenship and women taking the lead. I'm wondering you can share from your experience and your struggle ways in which men have participated or taken leadership in challenging patriarchal customs. In other ways, how have you or how can you engage men in this process? Oh my Thank God. you. <laughs> They're always in the process. <laughs> huh? Ah, maybe, yeah. Um, طبعاً, بدايةً, in the beginning, in the beginning, I always say this, I'm sure you felt it in my speech, women cannot do a real role in this society, in this world without, without men. But men have done this before without women, unfortunately. But now, now the future, we want full participation. Therefore, the effort of women is in collaboration with man. And it's for the rights of both men and women. It's not only for one. It's not for men or women. We're hoping for equality for everyone. This is one. The effort, yes. This is true. It is not right to say in the Arab Spring Revolution that the role of men was against the role of women. No, it enforced. It stood beside the role of women. Let's say, let's say, for example, my husband. His supporting role for me when I was sitting in the tent, even before the tent. And my struggle, my political struggle, he stood against all the rumors, the bad rumors against me. He refused them. He accepted what I was doing. He accepted that I was put in prison. He went on TV and spoke about me, and he was proud. That was a great role that helped me, supported me. This is not just for me, Tawakul. This is, this, this is the case for many, many women who were in this revolution in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Syria. The support of men was a great support as brother, as a, as a husband. There were a lot of women who did a lot, but there was full support. There was great support from men. I remember there were men who came to the square without their wives or their daughters, those men felt there was something missing. This is this all came from the Arab Spring revolutions. Now man is proud to hold his wife's hand and they both strive together. They both struggle and now this has given a positive image to both men and women equally. And therefore, what women and men have achieved, and the authority as well, they've achieved a lot. And this should not go backwards. We should go forward. We should move ahead. We need equal. We need the youth to work together. It also requires from the man that he should trust that that the women who played this great role in the revolution can also play this great role thank in you. the authorities and, and the new government. Thank you for the last question because it was it was truly an important one. Um, uh, Tabakal, maybe just to say that uh, we, we live in um, an age of fear. Um, we, we hear of wars and environmental catastrophe and 
And sadly, uh, as we all know and have seen in the last decade, fear is contagious, um, but so is courage. And when I listen to you, uh, I, I feel hope. I look at your country and region, and uh, the stories are, are stories of despair and, and uh, um, impending disaster. But, but listening to you today, um, I, I, and I'm sure I speak for many in the room, I feel hope, and, uh, and your courage is, is truly contagious. Thank you so much for coming.